Hello, it's Ryan from 2MinuteTennis.net, and in this video, I'm going to show you what you can learn from this point between David Ferrer and Grigor Dimitrov to help improve your singles play. Now, first, this video is courtesy of 12KGP Tennis on YouTube, so thank you so much for allowing me to use this video. Let's watch the point in its entirety, and then we'll diagram it. So this is a super fun point to watch and analyze. The first thing, let's look at Grigor returning serve here. Watch his forward movement. Watch when he's returning. See how he's got that pre-movement forward? And by the way, the timing of the split step, and that's a hop right there. Watch Grigor's feet right there, that little hop. The timing of that, he's going to land after Ferrer hits the ball. So if we zoom in here and we look at Ferrer making contact right now, look at Dimitrov's feet, he's actually in the air. The, the timing of a split step, and it doesn't matter if you're at the net or at the baseline, returning serve, doesn't matter, ground strokes. The timing on a split step is you want to be in the air as your opponent makes contact, and then you'll land after. That's the idea, is jump before they hit, take off before they hit, be in the air as they hit, and then land after. That's going to help you react actually faster to the ball than if you were to actually land when they're hitting the ball has to do with your reaction time and when you react to with your brain and your eyes recognizing where the ball goes, that's when you're going to land and then you explode. It's a good serve right to the body, which is not a serve that recreational players use enough. Most recreational players I hear and I, you know, they talk about where they're aiming. They think about down the tee and out wide. Well, right at the body is a great idea because then you're jamming your opponent. You can see that Grigor gets jammed here a little bit. Now, he's a one-hander, so it's actually easier for him to deal with a ball that's on his body. And he's actually going to push this ball back down the middle, which is a great place to return. Now, the moment he does this, you'll see that he immediately recovers to the center. That's a really important thing. I know it's so simple, but there are a lot of players I see on a daily basis who return serve and then move very slowly <laughs> to the middle, and then the opponent just crushes it into the open corner. So make sure that when you return in singles that you immediately start moving back to the center. Now, uh, Ferrer hits a great drop shot. You can see this ball He's, it looks like he's slightly behind the baseline, maybe on the baseline, and he goes for an out of the blue drop shot, which is actually a great time to do it. You know that your opponent is going to be recovering to the middle, so it's actually a good time to, to surprise them with a drop shot right on that ball if they recover quickly to the center. Now, when you are Grigor in this position and your opponent hits a great drop shot, it's important that when you're running, you pump your arms. Look at Grigor start pumping his arms as he's running. This is a real... <laughs> Sorry, that was funny. Look at him run backward. That was funny looking. All right, so notice his arms or his racket especially is not going behind him. I see this all the time. Players running for a ball that is super short in the court. And as they're running forward, they yank their racket behind them. A couple reasons you don't want to do that. First, it's not going to help you run as fast as you can. He's running forward and he was pumping his arms at the beginning. Pumping his arms. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just laughing at the backward run here. So he's, he's pumping his arms so he can run fast. But notice his racket always stays in front of him. When he's running forward, his racket never goes behind. It's in, That's an easy way to overhit the ball and actually be late with the swing as well because then if you pull the racket all the way back, then you got to bring it forward, especially um, if you're late getting there, you might feel like you overhit the ball and the ball goes out because you had too much energy. So he does not take the racket very far back. But here is where, in my opinion... I can't wait to read the comments on this one. But in my, and, and somebody's going to talk about how the net is higher down the line. But Grigor gets in trouble because he hits the ball cross court. There's a very simple idea in singles. And that is when you are at the net or, you know, around the service line and you hit cross court, you better end the point. You either need to hit a winner or you need to force an error with your shot. So if you're running forward, running down a drop shot toward a sideline, and 
you don't think you can end the point. And I know it's a, a you know it's a low ball here, but it's it's not a situation where um, he has to hit cross court. So what I figured is someone in the comments will say, well, he hit cross court here because he was trying to hit over the lower part of the net. Well, right here is when the ball is over the net. So if I just take a line that goes straight across, you know, that ball, that same height would have gone over the net going down the line if he would have just hit it down the line here. So he, he didn't need to hit this ball cross court to, to deal with a, you know, the lower part of the net. But by hitting cross court, now watch where uh, Ferrer is when he's striking the ball and look where Grigor is. When you're at the net and your opponent's on the left side of the court, you really need to be standing here. That helps you bisect the down the line and the cross court passing shot. But because Grigor hit cross court, and you can even see Grigor, his feet slide. Watch right here. See, see that right foot is sliding? His momentum, because he was running so fast forward, his momentum is carrying him forward. So when he hit the ball cross court, now his momentum is pulling him forward and he can't get over to the left in time. He should, and I've shown this in so many videos uh, in the past, is you should be on the same side of the, the court as your opponent when they're at the net, when you're at the net. So you can bisect where they can hit the ball, the down the line pass and the cross court pass. He should be right here as his opponent's hitting the ball. But because he hit cross court, he moved the opponent to the other side of the court and now he can't get over there. If he would have hit down the line, he would have been standing here when uh, Ferrer was hitting the ball and now he's bisecting where Ferrer can hit the ball. Because he hit cross court, he's totally out of position. Ferrer hits the down the line pass and Grigor is in major, major trouble. Now, let's talk about this from Ferrer's position. When you see your opponent looking like this, and in major trouble at the net, you have to immediately start moving forward. And that's what he does. He starts moving forward into the court, figuring that the next ball is going to be very weak. He's running in. You can see he has not taken his racket back yet. And, and that's a key thing. When you're running forward and you're sprinting and, and really trying to get up to that ball, don't take your racket back right away. If you have a lot of time to get there, that's one thing. But if you're struggling or running fast, keep the racket in front of you and then take the racket back when you get to the ball. So here's an interesting thing. If we look at the entire court, this entire court is wide open. And, you know, most recreational players in this situation would hit the ball into the open court. And I would actually recommend that. I would actually recommend that you hit the ball down the line into the open court. But Ferrer is very smart, obviously. You know, top five player in the world for so many years. And he knows that Grigor knows this. He knows that Grigor knows that the down the line shot is wide open. So he's taking a chance here that Grigor is just going to continue running, trying to get that ball. So Ferrer is going to hit behind him and he actually wrong foots him. So he purposely, you know, it, it, I would say if Ferrer was playing someone who is more of a beginner or an intermediate player, he would have hit this ball down the line because the you know, uh, maybe the intermediate tennis player, the average, you know, recreational tennis player might be giving up at this point. So they'll probably just stay here. So hitting cross court would actually hit it right to that player and then they could hit down the line on him. But he's playing, you know, uh, Dimitrov, another, you know, former top five player in the world. So he's figuring that Dimitrov is going to run. So he actually wrong foots him and hits behind him and then wins the point. So let's watch this point in its entirety a couple times to let you watch every idea that we've talked about at live speed.
So I want you to go out and film yourself playing and analyze your own strategy. And if you do, there's no doubt you're going to gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from 2MinuteTennis.net. You got this.